How's it going folks, it's Rob here. I don't really have a clip as such um, this week, just a bit of a quick update on a few things with the aquaponics. Uh, but I just wanted to uh, let you folks out there know, who have only just jumped on board recently, that we do have a lot more than just the last few aquaponic clips that you folks have seen. I've had a few people ask me how, you know, how would they go about building filters and solids lifting outlets and those sort of things. Well, I've already got a couple of clips on there, so this clip is more a little bit of um, spruiking those clips, so you can go back through the catalog, check them out, and then, yeah, jump on board and enjoy the new clips once they're posted in a little while's time. Uh, for you folks who don't know, we are renovating at the moment, and I will catch you up on that. Um, there are a couple of people who've only just recently found out and wondering why we moved out of the house. So I'll give you a bit of an update on that, and also an, another little bit of house cleaning, cleaning towards the end as well. Uh, now, to begin with, the aquaponics clips we have, I've got arranged into two main playlists. One's a little bit of an aquaponics 101. Um, they're not the be-all and end-all. You won't learn everything about aquaponics by watching these playlists, but they will um, bring you along and show you a few little challenges we've had and also a few ideas that you may be able to use. Now, the aquaponics 101 starts off with what is aquaponics, uh, runs through a basic breakdown of what aquaponics is, and then also covers things like stocking ratios or densities of how many fish you can run in a backyard system without having anything go pear shape with very little maintenance needed. Um, I also have a clip in there looking at iron, adding chelated iron into the um, system to help look after that deficiency. And there's a few other useful ones in there as well. I also have another playlist which is a DIY aquaponic system uh, playlist, a do-it-yourself one so to speak. In that playlist there, I do have a um, complete walkthrough on how you can chop and flip an IBC and turn it into a basic aquaponic system with a fish tank and a grow bed. And I also have another chop and flip one, which is a very, very small system. It's uh, one of the blue barrels that you'll see commonly around the place. Same thing, chop the top off, flip it over, turn it into a grow bed, and then there's a little small fish tank down the bottom. Uh, the other clips in there also include things like um, radial flow filters, our old radial flow filter I built for our first system here. Also looking at um, how to build a solids lifting outlet. And I've also got a recent clip in there which is a design clip. That clip's actually fairly thorough. It runs through a few different concepts, how the um, solids lifting outlets work as well as how the radial flow filters work and how I'd lay out a couple of beds. So definitely uh, worth checking out that clip, even if you haven't checked out the rest, if you're interested in building out your, um, building your own aquaponic system. Uh, I do have some other playlists, but I might hold them off for another clip and give you a bit of a look at them. Uh, now, what I thought I might do is just give you a quick look at the system. Uh, we had a little bit of a mini heat wave here this week, and um, yeah, there was a little, um, little trick I used just to make sure that the uh, plants would say, stay well hydrated. Uh, in case the, um, the builders knock the power off in the middle of our 40 degree or 100 degree Fahrenheit week. So I'll give you a bit of a look at that now. So this is how our aquaponics, or inverted commas, aquaponics system looks at the moment. She's very green. Uh, and for you folks who don't know, we had a little bit of a, um, a mishap where I nearly lost all my fish and decided to harvest them all in one hit, uh, which works out well because we are renovating at the moment. And the last thing you want is no electricity and water and air going to the fish in the fish tank. So I'm just running it fishless at the moment. I have um, posted a clip on that and I think it's included in one of those playlists. Just looking at how you can keep your system ticking over in between batches of fish. One of the issues we did have, as I said, we had a little bit of a warm week here. Um, a couple of days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees um, centigrade. And what I decided to do was run the system as a constant flow. So that's pretty easy. All I had to do was um, hop in here and take the little reducer. This is a little reducer that helps initiate the, um, the water uh, siphoning out of the grow bed. Um, you can check that out in that little clip up there, how, to, uh, what, how bell siphons work and how to make your own. Um, so uh, that'll explain what this little doodad there is for. And what it's left me with is a pipe that only comes up about halfway in the grow bed. And what I've done is taken out the bell siphon so the water doesn't drain. So there's always probably about, I don't know, 15 centimetres or six-ish inches of water in the base of the grow bed just to keep the uh, plants root, plant roots nice and hydrated um, so there, there was no um, chance of them dying, even if the pump was unplugged and there was no water flowing into the bed. 
Um, the caveat there is um, if I left it there for three or four days, a lot of the oxygen around the base of the, um, the media and the roots in there would have been used up by the plants and you would have ended up with a bit of an anaerobic or anoxic zone. So yeah, I've made sure, come down here every day to make sure that the pump is working at least overnight anyway. So that's just something I did to help keep the plants happy um, while we had a bit of a heat wave. At the moment, I'm leaving um, the standpipes in there because if I um, let all the beds drain at the moment, it will overflow the sump tank because the sump tank is fairly high. Um, so I'm just letting the water slowly get used up by the plants. And as you can see by the amount of plants we have in there, that's all one plant over the back there, folks. Um, yeah, hopefully the water will be used up fairly soon and I can put those bells back on the bell siphon. Just excuse me while I trip over some pavers. Um, as for harvest at the moment, um, we did no nip off a couple of charred leaves. Uh, not enough though, we really do need to come through and just chop them right back. We've taken out a couple of small heads of broccoli. They survived the heat wave fine. In fact, I think we're going to actually try and get these guys to give us um, small shoots all the way through to summer. I did nip out a small beetroot just to grate for a salad and I'll be taking two more tonight just to put in a bit of a coleslaw. Uh, the brahmi I haven't touched other than to um, just clear an area around the inlet pipe here because there's um, growing all the way through here a lot of roots and spreads very easily. Oh, and I did uh, cut back as you can see by the drying stems there. I did cut back the Okinawan spinach on this corner here because it was shading the thyme far too much. And not only that, it was growing out over the walkway and I kept bumping it every time I walked down to water the coffee and the sunshine chili and whatnot. So this beautiful display here is a flower head from a rabbit ear lettuce that has dried out. I can just come along and pick these little seed pods here, or flowers I should say, give them a bit of a rub. And I end up with all these little black seeds that will grow into more lettuce plants. So what I've been doing is just um, scattering a few around here and a few in here, pretty much all just a few everywhere. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll end up with a couple of little lettuce that come out. One thing I am really um, chuffed about is the gallangal over the back there is doing rather well. Even though we do have a few other spots around the patch, um, it'll be our mother rhizome for the next season. Oh, and just to bring you up to date with some of the other ginger around the patch, I noticed while I was watering before, we have the first of the shoots from the ginger that we popped out the other week. So pretty chuffed about that. And the other day when I was around, I noticed that we've also got some ginger shoots in the other large root pouch garden, um, just over in the wicking, or the, the wicking tray beds over there. So pretty impressed with that. Oh, and you folks who are interested, I do sell these root pouches. There'll be a link at the end of the clip and down in the description. I don't have all sizes in stock at the moment because we're living in a very small cottage. Um, but yeah, um, if you are interested in some, um, hit me up at the, um, the email address on the website and I'll see if I can help you out. I might as well show you this while I'm here. The other broccoli in the root pouch is going all right. We're still getting small heads on it as well. We're trying to nick them off before they go to flower. You might be able to see over the back, there's a little bud there that might be opening soon. So even though they're just small buds, we will be nipping them off. I mean, even these little leaves here, you can take them off and throw them through a stir fry or something like that. Um, not very tasty in a salad, but if you chop them up and give them a bit of a stir fry, they turn out all right. Uh, this shade cloth is a bit of a, um, a twofer. It's um, protecting the broccoli from the harsh afternoon sun because there's no shade house above us here at the moment and also keeping the cabbage butterflies out. So yeah, pretty chuffed with how that's gone. Just to bring you folks up to speed who aren't aware, we are renovating all this scruffy paintwork will be coming off because we are raising our house and building a room through this window here out the back and a little bit of a deck that goes that way. And as a result, we'll be removing all that little walkway and turning it into stairs and our current back stairs have gone. Um, the reason we're doing this uh, is pretty much all because it's a fairly small house. And if I'm going to continue um, stocking a few bits and pieces, I need storage room so I can um, hold more stock. Not only that, this little area down in here and where I'm standing at the moment will be another room downstairs. And I'm hoping to hold little workshops here. Not huge ones, uh, just, you know, probably 10 to 12 people at the very most, five is a good number I think, where we can sit down and talk about aquaponics and other bits of backyard farming. So that's the plan, that's always been the goal, so I can um, pretty much will just work from home and earn an income. That's the plan, so what they're doing is raising 800 at the moment, and then they'll be putting down a concrete slab and just building a little mudroom in over there where the back stairs come down. 
Uh, there'll be a bit of a laundry, a toilet and some storage and then the concrete slab that's left after the builders are finished and the council have signed off on it um, will be submitting new plans to council and I'll be building this in myself with Bianca and a mate who is a carpenter and yeah just to make it cheaper we just couldn't afford the whole build out done by the builders even though thank you John we do appreciate all the help you've given us so far. Uh, the one catch to all this is though if you haven't caught the last clip um, yeah, we had to um, book in for the power lines to be removed off the house so they can raise it up. And unfortunately, the next open spot they have is the 20th of November. So the builders have pretty much all had a week off, which I think they would have appreciated during the heat. Um, but they're having to go and do other small jobs just to tide them over until we get Energex here. And once that happens, these guys will be lifted. As you can see, they've got the RSJs and everything under there already. Um, this place will be lifted and concreted hopefully before Christmas. We'll see how it goes. They've got to remove a lot of soil from under here as well and dig down and all sorts of stuff. So all the stumps are made as well. So it's just a bit of a waiting game now. Um, yeah, for them to come around and remove the power so um, John and the boys can lift the house. So that's where we are with that. So now for a bit of house cleaning. First off, I need to thank Jeff. Uh, Jeff is someone who's followed us for a while now. He's been at me because some of my plants don't look green all the time. Uh, a lot of the time that is to do with the cameras I'm using. The mobile phone cameras I've noticed do make things look a little bit yellow. Someone complained about the chili being yellow last week's clip. Uh, that's just the, what the camera does unfortunately. Uh, some of that plant is yellow, but then you can see the new growth after I added some compost on. It's nice and green. So, uh, But Jeff anyway, set me up some of his um, fish hydrolostat. So it's something I really should have been making myself with my own waste. Uh, from the fish, from the aquaponics. Generally though, um, I just either trench compost them down the back or we were freezing them for a while while we had a large freezer and I was using them in the compost piles just to add um, a little bit of a kickstart to the, um, the all-in-one compost piles I was building. So never went to waste, but yeah, I just thought uh, I should thank you very much, Jeff, publicly um, for this stuff here. The other thing I just wanted to quickly mention is I've stuffed up with a post on the community tab. I accidentally made it public and it was about a, um, a hangout session that I have on the Zoom platform with Patreon members and also the um, YouTube members who have um, paid when they hit that little join button to, to help support the channel, which, you know, I thank you very much for doing. Unfortunately, I made it a public post and some people thought it was open to the public. I did put up an apology post um, and someone has um, mentioned that they, they think I might be going down the lines of selling out and I'm um, just in it for cash now. I can guarantee you that is not the case. All the, um, uh, I think that paywall was mentioned as well, all the helpful stuff like how to build aquaponic components, how to build the wicking beds, all that stuff is free for you guys to watch on YouTube here. The only videos I do post over on Patreon and then let the YouTube members um, look at are bits and pieces of me walking around the yard chatting about things like what I've done with the aquaponics when I gave it a haircut the other day. You didn't see it there, but you heard about it in this clip. They're small little clips, two, three minute long clips that if I post to YouTube, I actually get people unsubscribing to the channel because they don't like that sort of content. Um, they're here for the longer form. So they also don't get very many views either. So I've decided I still like making them. I make them for those folks over there. So that's the story, guys. Don't feel like you're missing out on anything important. Um, I just wanted to set that straight. Um, once again, I do thank everyone who does support us financially. Uh, I was asked by people to start Patreon. I was also asked by people to activate the join button on YouTube. It's not as if I'm out there trying to earn every coin I can from you folks. If I was, I'd be spruiking it every time and telling you to support me, which I'm not. If you want to, that's, you know, not a problem. You get perks and other bits and pieces in return. So there you go. Um, as for the Hangouts, yes, there will be a Hangout tomorrow for you folks on Patreon and your YouTube members. Um, it'll probably be in about, well, the time I post this clip, probably in about 10 or 11-ish hours. So, so today's clip is, um, yeah, pretty much all off the cuff. Um, I didn't really put a lot of thought into it, sorry, folks, but I thought I would just um, recommend you check out those older videos if you're a new subscriber. And thanks to Mark for um, helping me to make that decision this morning. Um, so... Yeah, I do hope you enjoy those videos if you haven't seen them before and they do help you out a little bit. Anyway, I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope you have enjoyed this little bit of an update if you stuck around to the end and I wish you all the best in your gardening and aquaponic adventures and I will catch you next clip. Cheers all and have a top one.